Hello, George Romanich here. In today's video, we are going to talk about scaling or scale analysis. This is extremely powerful and useful technique that we use often in atmospheric sciences, oceanography, various fields of engineering to estimate the magnitudes of various terms in governing equations. In the world of science, we use equations to represent nature, various phenomena in nature. As Richard Feynman famously said, if you cannot describe something quantitatively and with equations, it means you don't know much about it. And that's true. For example, there is no equation for a love. Who loves you? Imagine if there was equation like that, then you would solve that equation. You would find who loves you or who you nicely match with. And you would go to that person and you would have a lovely life. But that's not the case. So you roam around, you go to disco clubs every night to try to find somebody who loves you and who, who you will love to have a lovely life. Because there is no equation. At any rate, in atmospheric sciences, equations that describe motion of air are Navier-Stokes equations. And I derive them and describe them many times. These equations have various terms. The question is, are all these terms, all these forcing terms, equally important when you want to analyze specific phenomena? Now, emphasis here and throughout this video is on the phrase specific phenomena. When you want to do scaling, you have to know what you are talking about. You cannot carry out generic scaling. That, that's just full set of equations. I got excited and hit my microphone. In today's video, I will lay out basics of scaling. And then in the next videos, we will apply these fundamentals to Navier-Stokes equations. This should be very useful for you because this topic is encountered throughout atmospheric science courses, oceanography courses, engineering courses, scaling of governing equations. Let's start. To carry out scale analysis, the typical expected values of the following quantities have to be specified. The first one is the magnitudes of the field variables. The second one is amplitudes of the field variables. And the third one is the characteristic length, depth and time scales on which these fluctuations occur. The best way to see how these three principles apply in practice is to provide an example. And here I will use an example of a cyclone in mid latitudes. And what we want to do is we want to perform scale analysis of the horizontal pressure gradient in that cyclone. I assume all of you know what mid latitudes are. These are the latitudes situated between tropical regions and polar latitudes. And uh, what is a cyclone? Well, cyclone is something like this. Namely, it's a large scale weather system that rotates in counterclockwise direction, so these are winds, in the northern hemisphere, and it has a low pressure in the center of this system. So the thick lines are the lines of constant pressure or isobars. So if I tell you that this is, for example, pressure P over here, because we have a low pressure in the center, then this isobar needs to be P minus some delta P, where delta P is positive. Now we can also assign a coordinate system. Let's say this is X, this is Y. In principle, I can even put it in the center of this cyclone, but I didn't do it because then I will mess up this L that I wrote here. So for this cyclone, this delta P is the surface pressure fluctuation. Namely, pressure in the X and Y directions 
fluctuates such that if here we have pressure P, then the mean pressure over here is P minus delta P. And delta P therefore quantifies these fluctuations in the mean surface pressure. But these fluctuations occur over some horizontal distance. And we will call that distance L. Now I see I a little bit maybe messed up because L is used to indicate here low pressure. So I can use D to indicate this horizontal distance. And this horizontal distance D would be this. So D is characteristic horizontal scale. Now in mid latitudes, typical values of delta P are of the order of 10 millibars, which is also 10 hectopascals if you want SI units. And this happens over the characteristic horizontal scale of 1000 kilometers. Okay, so pressure generally drops 10 millibars over 1000 kilometers in mid latitude cyclones. So let me write maybe this is mid latitude cyclone. Now from my video on pressure gradient force, we know that horizontal pressure gradients are delta P delta X and delta P delta Y in the X and Y directions, which means that both of these are of the order of delta P over D because I could have chosen this D like so. So you can see it's the same in the Y direction as it is in the X direction, which means these two terms have the same scale. Delta P is change of pressure and we said it's about 10 millibars over this horizontal distance D, which is 1000 kilometers. So I say this is 10 millibars over 10 to power 3 kilometers. And uh, millibar is hectopascal. So this should be 10 to power 3 pascals. And this should be, I just add three more to get meters, 10 to the power 6 meters which means this scales as 10 to power minus 3 pascals per meter. Now, you might be not impressed with this whole work, but you should, because the same pressure drop of 10 millibars can occur in a tornado vortex over the characteristic length of approximately 100 meters. So what point am I making here? The point is that different weather systems will have different scaling. What I want to say is that you need to know what is the phenomena for which you are conducting your scaling analysis. You cannot just do some generic scaling. As you can see here, I conducted scaling for mid latitude cyclone. So I need to know either from measurements or physics reasoning, what are the characteristic values of uh, fluctuations and uh, length, depth and or time scales to, to carry out this scaling. Now in atmosphere, as well as in uh, our oceans, motions are strongly dependent on horizontal scales, much more than vertical scales. And therefore, this scale, horizontal scale, provides a convenient method to classify weather systems. And here I made a nice table, as I often do, where my main source is Holton, excellent book, An Introduction to Dynamic Meteorology. And here we have horizontal scales of atmospheric motions. So we have different types of motions and associated horizontal scales. As you can see, I used L here and I used D 
here. So don't be confused uh, with that. Generally, we use L, but because I decided to use L as a low pressure system, I changed it here to D. At any rate, we see that molecular mean free path has general uh, characteristic horizontal scale of 10 to the power of minus 7 meters. What is molecular mean free path? It's the mean path that molecules have before colliding with another molecule. Then we have minute turbulent eddies. These are the small turbulent eddies and these are their characteristic scales. Then we have small eddies which are a little bit larger than these minute turbulent eddies then dust devils and so on. And then we have wind gusts that have typical horizontal scales 10 meters to 100 meters. Now here I put star because I partially not disagree, but I want to add more to, to this Holton's argument. Namely, wind gusts have these scales if you have cup anemometers or some low response anemometers. If you have very, and I put it here, if you have very, very high frequency anemometers, such as ultrasonic anemometers or cobra probes, cobra probes can measure up to 5 to 10,000 hertz, then you will definitely pick up these small eddies and minute turbulent eddies, and you can consider them as wind gusts. Anyways, this is the typical scale of tornadoes, thunderstorm clouds, lines of thunderstorm clouds and fronts, hurricanes, mid-latitude cyclones. And you can see, actually, that I use the same 10 to the power of 6 meters or 1,000 kilometers in my analysis. And uh, the largest phenomena on our atmosphere in terms of weather system, planetary Rossby waves. If you stick on this channel... Then we will cover all these in details. I already talked about molecular mean free path in my video on atmosphere as a continuum, but I will talk even more when I start my series on kinetic theory of gases. But all of these will be covered in multiple lectures and from different points of view. Perhaps scaling will not help you to find love of your life or what disco club best suits you regarding your dancing style or personality, but it will definitely help you to estimate the magnitudes of various terms in governing equations giving specific, given specific phenomena. Again, emphasis must be on the phrase specific phenomena. In the next video, we will apply these concepts to horizontal momentum equations, which are Navier-Stokes equations in the horizontal direction, and the specific phenomena is mid-latitude motions at large scales, which we call synoptic scales. Why do we do that? Because we will see that certain terms can be eliminated without sacrificing too much physics. And that significantly simplifies the mathematics of the problem while the physics and dynamics stay pretty much unchanged. I say pretty much unchanged because every time you eliminate some forcing term, you eliminate a little bit of physics. But how much physics you eliminate can be determined from scaling, from the order of magnitude of various terms. And that's what we will do in next video when we will grapple with Navier-Stokes equations and the scaling. Until then, goodbye.